Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank all the witnesses. I think you've all been very, very helpful, each of you, uh, in, in helping us try to grapple with this issue. Uh, but, Ms. Wilson, I wanted to uh, focus on you. I know the comparison uh, was made earlier to, to alcohol and, and uh, smoking, I guess, uh, regarding uh, choices that could be made. And I know that uh, we uh, in the legislature have, have put limits on uh, those who sell alcohol and we say, look, uh, young people are not able to really make that choice, so we're going we're gonna to put a limit. Uh, you know, you've got to be 18 to, to, buy, to buy alcohol. We also put limits on people buying cigarettes because uh, young people, uh, I'm, I remember for years when I was younger, during spring break, the, the cigarette companies would be down there in Florida and elsewhere giving free samples of cigarettes out, you know, and young people uh, were unable to, uh, well, I, I think they were exploited. They weren't, uh, there was an informational asymmetry where they just didn't have the wherewithal and that circumstances wasn't good for them making a decision in that, that circumstance. So we, we, we uh, did away with that pretty much. Uh, I have some areas in my district that are underbanked. Uh, Brockton, Massachusetts, uh, uh, we were hit pretty hard by subprime lenders uh, and there was an informational asymmetry and also there was, uh, the, the community is underbanked. We, we've convinced some from credit unions to go in there and to try to help people out, but mortgages were not available. So uh, the folks that were selling subprime had a field day down there. And then when the crisis hit, boy, it, it really hit Brockton very, very badly. Uh, and they're, they're just recovering now. Um, unlike some of the, I also represent Boston, they're, they're, they're well banked and it's not a problem. But for the folks that we're talking about who are uh, exploited by, um, by payday lenders, do they really have a choice? Do they really have, is it, is it as simple as that? They can either go to the payday lender or they got another institution that'll, that'll lend to them at a, at a, at a better rate. Well, Representative Lynch, I actually thank you for, for, for making those points because I think you bring out an important perspective um, that takes us back to the title of, of, of this hearing um, and the initial question. Um, you know, one of the things that the Center for Responsible Lending has been very public and, ad and, and adamant about is the importance of actually making sure that community-based banking institutions have an opportunity to compete. Um, and the reality is, um, because most of the conversation has focused not on actually granting legitimate relief to community bank financial institutions and instead addressing uh, topics like payday lenders and those other institutions, we haven't been able to do that. So the reality is, is that one of the things we'd like to see is that this conversation should focus on how do we get credit unions and community banks to offer legitimate alternatives at lower interest rates for consumers in traditionally underserved areas. That's a conversation worth engaging in. Uh, that's a conversation that Congress can do great benefit uh, to American consumers uh, for, for addressing. Um, but that is a very separate thing than saying that it should be acceptable to charge 300 percent or 400 percent interest rates. Right. I mean, I, I traveled a lot as an iron worker uh, before I came to Congress. And, uh, you know, oftentimes I'd only be in a place maybe six months, eight months, and many times shorter times than that. And you'd have to go to a payday lender to cash a check because you didn't have, you know, you're, you're actually a sort of a, a, a traveling worker, so you wouldn't have a connection to that, that neighborhood or that city. And so without an established, uh, you know, residence, you, you had to rely on payday lenders, and they'd typically take 2% of your check plus a fee, plus a fat fee. So, you know, it, 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 um, you see where people don't have that, and many, and I couldn't go to a regular bank. It was just, there, there was no, you'd have to get an account, and you might be leaving there, so... To, to set that all up was just not practical. So I've seen firsthand how, you know, some people can be uh, taken advantage of if they, if they don't have all the advantages that, that, that other people might have. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll yield back the balance of my time and thank you all for your testimony.